Hey everybody, welcome to the Happy Harvest Homestead. Today I'm going to be covering meat rabbit tree goals. When you start raising any type of livestock, it's really important that you begin with certain goals in mind so that you know what to focus on, what to work towards, what to cull for. If you don't have goals for your rabbit tree, you're going to end up keeping pretty babies, even though their genetics might not be the best. You may end up naming some of your kids and not being able to butcher them because they're so sweet and your kids have fallen in love with them. You may end up giving them heat lamps or taking them inside during the winter time because they just look so cold when in reality all those things are really bad. And later when you have a lot of very expensive rabbits who are producing next to nothing for you, you're going to wonder what went wrong and how your idea of a cheap, easy source of meat became having a bunch of pet rabbits. The goals I have for my rabbitry are very easy and simple to remember. It's kind of like having a bar stool with like three legs. Those three goals are productivity, proper stewardship, and sustainability. My first bar stool leg, as it were, is pretty self-evident. I want my rabbits to be productive. I'm not raising pets, This is not a hobby farm. I'm breeding productive meat rabbits who will either live out their lives growing as fast as they can and being eaten or growing as fast as they can and then staying alive to produce more babies for me to butcher and eat. So obviously, when I am buying rabbits as breeding stock or I'm keeping baby rabbits to be future breeders or I'm culling breeders who maybe aren't doing a good job, I'm going to be focusing on that aspect of it very heavily. For example, I just called Izzy this morning because she was not a good producer. She's only had one litter, I believe, last summer, and she was not a good mom then, and she's never had babies since, and even though her body structure is really good and her fast growing rate up to butcher weight was really good, her genetics were really good, Her mother and her grandmother and her great-grandmother were excellent moms. Her full sister was an excellent mom. She was a gorgeous color. I could get a lot of money if I sold her babies because they would be pretty colors. There was all this good stuff going for her, but she wasn't productive, and that's one of my main stool legs. So she got cold. All right, now let's talk about my second goal, which is good stewardship. I believe that every animal on this farm God has entrusted to us to properly care for And that while he did mean for us to eat meat and to raise these animals to butcher, it is our responsibility to properly steward that gift. While these animals are alive and on my homestead, and even if I'm selling animals off of my homestead, it's my job to make sure they have a good life. I am not going to abuse or neglect this amazing gift I've been given. I'm not going to keep them in tiny cages And I'm not going to sell them as babies to some family with a toddler who thinks they want a pet rabbit, but in all reality don't know anything about raising rabbits and will not be good pet rabbit owners. I want my rabbits to live a really good, happy, healthy, beautiful, wonderful life with fresh air and clean surroundings, with good social lives, living in the natural, happy way they are meant to. When those bunnies get to heaven, they're going to brag about being raised on my rabbit tree. And then the third and last but equally important bar stool leg or goal or whatever is sustainability. This is overlooked by so many people, but it is an essential part of why we even homestead in the first place. If I'm going to go through all the trouble of line breeding my my entire own strain of rabbits and putting all this time and effort into their housing, into their genetics, into their care, and their food, I don't want to lose all of that when feed store prices go up or if something even worse happens and our family needs to have closed loop self-reliance and can't buy bags and bags of pellets. So that is why I don't feed my rabbits any pellets. And instead of opted for a natural and more slow growing diet that is sustainable. We have 30 acres that is just covered in weeds and nutritious wild plants that we can easily harvest and feed to our rabbits for free instead of spending increasingly it seems more and more money on pellets. We do still rely on some outside inputs at the moment because we are balancing 
the sustainability goal with the production goal. If right now we went to 100% closed loop sustainability with no outside inputs and just reusing the resources on our farm, our production would tank drastically. Right now we're in the peak of summer weed growth and at the tail end of breeding season, so we'd probably be okay for a while, but pretty soon we would run out of the whole grains we sometimes supplement with, so our kits would grow even slower than they are now. Our grow outs are only four pounds at four months old, and if we stopped feeding grain, they'd probably grow even slower and we're kind of running out of housing space for them. So I've been kind of pushing the production side, you know, to get them big, get them butchered, so we can use that cage and tractor space for other upcoming babies who are getting big pretty fast. So that's why I'm leaning more heavily on the production side at the moment. But if we were 100% sustainable, our kits would take forever to grow to butcher weight. And in the fall and winter, we would pretty quickly run out of hay and be stuck with a whole bunch of malnourished rabbits at the peak of breeding season. So that is why sustainability is one of three goals instead of our main goal. I hope you enjoyed this overview of our rabbitry goals. I am really trying hard to stick to these goals in how we house our rabbits and feed our rabbits and cull our rabbits. These have been our goals for a while and I've been working towards these goals for a while. And as of right now, I feel like we're meeting them all pretty good, which feels amazing. Hopefully this has inspired you to recommit to your goals, or if you haven't made any, then hurry and make some before you accidentally get off track and end up going with your gut or following your soft heart. I know having these goals has really helped me get through some tough decisions that at the time, if I didn't have these goals, I would totally have done a completely opposite thing that would have led to the overall colony's deep detriment. But because I had these goals, I was able to stay firm And what I was doing, and even though it was hard in the moment, now looking back several years later, I am so happy I chose to cull hard for productivity and sustainability while still trying to be an adequate steward over a lot of sick and ailing rabbits. I would definitely not be in the successful position I am now if I didn't begin with and stick to our three main goals. Thanks for watching!